effort and have the emotional investment in the task at hand. So psychological safety, Amy Edmondson researched this and uh, you might have heard of this before. Google recently announced that it was their most critical trait in their most highly effective teams. Some of the leading organizations use this and I believe that applied improvisers are powerfully and uniquely suited to play this out and to execute it for our clients because this is what we do. Now, she had a quadrant, and if you're talking about organizational development, you gotta have a quadrant. <laughs> what, what disc are you? What color are you? Whatever. So, allow me to share improv's quadrant. When you have a low yes and a low and, you are the blocker, right? You are the blocker. You are the individual that isn't isn't agreeable, and you're not uh, and you're not putting forth your own effort. We have a passenger who has a high yes and a low and, and I like passengers around me. They in my organization, in my workplace, they tend to agree with everything I say, but they don't contribute. Um, we have individuals like this who are uh, often new to an organization and they don't yet have the confidence uh, to express their voice. The driver, a high and and a low yes. Do we know this guy? <laughs> on the stage, right? On the stage, we've got, you know, him saying, okay, everybody into the rocket ship and get the weapon and here come the aliens and we get it, you know? And, 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 we're, just, and we're following around and we're following behind and we're trying to keep up with him as fast as we can. This is an interesting individual because in Amy Edmondson's research, she has found that this is the anxiety zone. And let me tell you, friends, it is often from a good place. They are well-intentioned. They have a high level of personal responsibility to get, the, uh, to get the work done. But this is the type of individual that you might hear say something like, if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. Right? I'll do it. I got it. I got it. And they, and they have a high level of personal accountability, and yet they are not... Uh, they, feed into it and they develop more anxiety and they have an inability to listen and hear the rest of the players. This individual is who people leave. Uh, this is, in organizations, people do not leave their jobs, they leave their managers. And individuals, and individuals in this anxiety zone need to be recognized for both the effort and the good intention and the damage that they do. Um, clearly, oh, so uh. um, clearly what we are going for in a good and, and uh, effective improv scene is the generative zone. We need to be able to co-create and we need to be able to elaborate and listen to each other's offers and add our own voice. What we have, good Lord, what we have in, in Amy Edmondson's work, when we are able to establish the culture as one of a learning and not proper and perfect execution, the culture changes, and it is a game changer. We become psychologically safe to think of new ideas, innovative ideas, our creative ideas get heard in a very, uh, in a very real and positive way. Okay. How do we do that? What is the practical application of this solid scientific research in an improv workshop? So I lead you now to the work of David Roth. David Roth leads the Neuro Leadership Institute out of New York. And he has done, he has a brain-based model for collaboration and uh, innovation and influencing others. The, he, it is his contention and deeply based in neurological biology, this is true that we are all deeply social animals and every single social interaction that we have is either going towards a social <coughs> reward or away from a social threat. His acronym for this research is called SCARF. And SCARF stands for Status, Certainty, Autonomy, Relatedness, and Fairness. And there are umpteen different ways of different improv exercises that we can establish status 
and deal with the comfort and discomfort of certainty and understand what it's like to have autonomy taken away with a manager who is high in the anxiety zone. All of these can be played out in some deeply powerful uh, experiential learning because that is where, uh, that is where uh, the sweet spot is. Barbara, two minutes, I'm totally good. The, uh, Barbara, this, I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. The, uh, this morning, oh my god, and this is getting recorded, I'm just, I, I it's not nearly as professional as what I was doing in the bathroom this morning. <laughs> about AIN being at a crossroads. And I could not agree more, because let me tell you that I don't know if anyone else works in the tech sector, but our lives and technology and society and the nature of work is changing. 60% of the jobs that we will have in five to 10 years have not even been invented yet. Our high school graduates are, I don't know the type of jobs that will be available to them, and yet, and yet, every corporate leader and thought leader and researcher is talking about the two, the two most important skills that we must have for the future of work, and those are collaboration and communication. We are so well prepared for this. We are. There is, we, have, we know IQ, and we have now had a solid decade of EQ. Watch for the tsunami of literature coming out about AQ. Welcome to Adaptability Quotient. Follow Harvard and Stanford and Northwestern's research into this. No, the uh, Adaptability Quotient is that, is that ability to <laughs> mentally, pivot. <laughs> mentally pivot. Think on your feet, deal with unpredictability. It is applied improvisation. <laughs>